Hi guys, welcome to a sit down vlog. This is my condo and yeah, today we are just going to talk about things that I wish I knew before starting my fitness journey. And maybe I've heard these when I first started, but I just didn't want to listen. And so I had to learn these the hard way along the way. So I don't want you to make the same mistakes. And these are just going to be some top tips that will definitely help you in your fitness journey. Even if you don't believe them, they are true. So please, please don't make the same mistakes as I did. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Georgia. I'm a personal trainer. And here I make fitness videos as well as a lot of traveling vlogs and things like that because we do live in Bangkok and you might be able to hear in the background some cars moving by. That is just the busyness of Bangkok. Nothing I can do about it. And I'm almost moving. I'm gonna say way too, it's still a secret, so you'll find out, you'll find out. So first things first is you don't have to have a history of playing sports to start your fitness journey. You don't have to be already fit to start. When we look at some of our favorite fitspos, most of the time they'll be like, oh, I've been fit my entire life. I've been dancing when I was three years old. I've been playing basketball since this is this. And that's not always the case. For me, I was never really that into sports. I was quite a shy child and just playing team sports were not really my thing. I wanted to, but I was just super, super shy. So I started much, much later on. I was in grade 11, grade 12 when I got into fitness. So it took me a long while. So you really, really can start from scratch. It's just important to start try out some things even if it's hard just learn and progress as you go and you can always just listen to what other coaches are saying people in the field who invest in a coach to just help you throughout your first months and this is really really beneficial as well you don't have to exercise solely for the purpose of becoming a smaller size of yourself a smaller version that's not what exercise is for exercise is to help you get Get stronger to make you fitter to make your daily life easier but becoming just trying to become just a smaller version of yourself is just such a waste of time and just a distraction of what you actually can achieve exercise really is a celebration of what your body is capable of when you are just focusing on fat loss and just becoming smaller and smaller and smaller this can easily lead to a bad relationship with exercise and your body because your body is worth so much more and it's just an amazing vessel when you slowly start to shift your focus to reaching prs in the gym becoming stronger becoming fitter you'll start to create a deep sense of appreciation for your body and become happier when it comes to fitness there is never a finish line so if you're doing a six-week challenge an eight-week challenge you're not done after that you really have to take all of the fundamentals all of the knowledge that you've learned with you throughout your entire life so this is why it is so important to make your journey as easy and sustainable as possible so you can do it for your entire life so now we are at number four and this one this one was me for the longest longest time so over training in the gym more definitely does not equal better with fitness we really want to go for quality over quantity exercising really is a means to build the body up and when we are going overboard we really are just breaking it down training for two hours every single day really is not the way to go and you will experience burnout so when it comes to weight training i personally like to go for about three to five exercises where I can really, really focus on my form, really focus on going heavy with the weight. And then here and there, maybe I'll do like a small accessory work or something like that. But I definitely don't do like 10 exercises, two to three sets, that is not it. And also I don't kill myself with cardio every single day. I'll probably do cardio about once a week, maybe. So number five kind of flows in into the overtraining bit. Recovery is part of fitness. When it comes to training, less really is more. 
like I said, choose a few exercises and really try and progress in those. Don't just go for more and longer. It's not gonna benefit you at all and you won't see good lasting results doing that method. Even just resting once a week might not be enough. I personally like to rest about three times a week. That's a lot, but I feel my body can really rebuild and when I go back into the gym, I really have a lot more power to actually push through a good workout. And when you do overtrain, you're gonna have to take a lot of time off. So just finding that balance is gonna be very beneficial in the long run. So weightlifting really is a stressor, it's very good for your body, but it is also taxing because your body works very, very hard during weightlifting. So I like to balance it out with some yoga, stretching, especially because I really like fitness. I don't just want to lie around the whole day. I do want to get some movement in and for me personally, I like yoga because I don't even have to leave my house. I can just do it in my house, quick, fast, and my body gets a great stretch while I'm working on my mobility as well and when it comes to supplements a lot of people think supplements are gold and they really rely on supplements as a crutch to their journey to see progress but supplements really are just a little sprinkle it's it's not gonna do the work for you it's not even gonna do a lot of work for you it's just there to aid in an already good established fitness routine so sleeping recovery having a good well-planned training session in is more important as well as nutrition so those are the best the basics the fundamentals you have to get right first and then you can bring in supplements to just give a little extra boost. So the only supplements I recommend to my clients are whey protein and this is just to add in some extra protein if you don't get enough of it through your diet. So if you are a protein lover and you get enough in, in your diet then it's totally fine you don't have to add a protein shake. Me personally I'm a carb lover so just having that quick and convenient protein shake it helps me a lot to just reach my protein goal. I also suggest taking some creatine if you are exercising vigorously, like doing weight training, as well as pre-workout if you just want that extra boost of energy. And a pre-workout can mean, you know, the actual supplement pre-workout or a high carb meal, a banana or even coffee. And then throughout the week, I also like to take some vitamins, but this is just because I actually did go to the doctor and she told me what my deficiencies are and that is why I take vitamins. It's not really gonna help if you're not deficient in them. All right, so now we are coming to number seven. So when it comes to exercise and progressing, technique really is the most important part. So I see a lot of people, they'll just add weight and add weight and add weight, and then their technique really just starts to suffer and is not great at all. And that is, that's just a waste of time. It's not really gonna do much. So really stop ego lifting and focus on your form, even though the weight might not be as heavy. Perfect your form and the results will come and you will also decrease your risk of injury. And this one is for my ladies. So if you are feeling a little bit hmm, in the gym, you know, there's a lot of males and it can be a little bit intimidating. This is your place as well. You are paying the same gym fee. The weights are there for everyone. None of these people own the gym and you definitely have the right to take up space and use the equipment that you want to use. If someone really is making you uncomfortable, please do not stand back ask for assistance that is why the staff in the gym are there number nine is all about mental health i know blah 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 this is just something everyone talks about but if you don't actually like yourself changing your body is not going to change that for you i know this is not what you want to hear this is not what you believe but it's the truth i learned that the hard way when we moved to bangkok my life just was a lot better but my mental health didn't change because my body changed or my environment changed that can be a really big part but really sitting with yourself and unpicking these fixed beliefs are really going to help you in the long run and meditation for me 
really, really help to cultivate just that sense of compassion for myself, that sense of love, belonging, and respect for myself. If you're not looking after your mental health, it'll find ways to manifest physically. If you have no idea where to start when it comes to meditation, I do have meditations on my app Sudo. I will link it in the description if you want to take a look at that. It also has a seven day free trial. And I also have a really, really good ebook on my website all about mental health and how you feel about your body. So there's a ton of journal prompts in there which are really, really beneficial if you just want to change the way you think about yourself and your body. Okay, number 10, the last one. Scales are overrated. So, so many of my girls come to me and they, they say, you know, the scale went up and I wanna lose you know, this amount and I wanna be this amount. And it's like, these numbers are made up numbers. And when you start to train in the gym, you are getting toned, you're sculpting yourself, you're building muscle of course the scale is going to go up. The scale cannot tell you how much fat you lost and how much muscle you built. So if that scale goes up, some people will just, you know, allow that to really ruin their day. And that is one piece of data, one piece of a really big puzzle that you need to look at. Scales really do not tell the whole story and it is a very inaccurate way to measure progress. And you definitely don't have to have a certain percentage of fat or be one size to be healthy, beautiful or worthy. That is just a societal standard that we made up, literally made up. As I said, the scale is just one part, but are you sleeping well? What are your energy levels like? What is your menstrual cycle like? Are you having your period? Is it regular? Are you more energetic? Are you stronger? Are you fitter? What does your body actually look like to you? Are you seeing your muscles being built? What is your mental health like? All of that is much, much more important and really needs to get looked at as well. And those are my top tips, my 10 things that I wish I knew before I started my fitness journey. And I hope this helps you. Please, if you have anything that helps you with your fitness journey that I might just have forgotten, please comment down below so everyone else can read them. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a like or give a subscribe, anything like that. And yeah. See you, bye.